welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Kristen and welcome to my channel. So today guys, this is in collaboration with Chapters Interactive Stories. Now this is completely for free app that you guys can download, read different stories, and this is one of those that you actually choose your outcome of how the story goes. Now the last time we did this collaboration, you guys seem to really enjoy and actually requested for me to continue this. So I thought we would go ahead and continue on with the next chapter. So the first time we read All the Wrong Reasons, which is the one that we are going to be continuing in today, and there's a whole bunch of different ones in romance, fantasy, young adult, as well as community. So we're going to go into All the Wrong Reasons and continue into chapter two. Hey, are you okay? Is something wrong? Are you in shock? My next door neighbor is millionaire playboy Justin Adams, the guy who drives Jill crazy. I don't mean to pry, it's just, you seem you've been crying. I, I don't, I mean, I am, but on the verge of a panic, you wipe away your tears, which is hard to do with a bottle in your hand. Deftly, Justin raises across the divider and gently takes the champagne bottle from your hand. So you can compose yourself, he even turns away and begins to scrutinize the label. As you hurriedly fix your dripping eyeliner, you realize something. He's averting his eyes to give me privacy. This, this is quite a good vintage. Oh my gosh, what should I do? Introduce yourself to your new neighbor, meet him later when you're more presentable, or run back inside right this minute. Ooh, if we had 12 rubies, I definitely would introduce ourselves. but we're gonna meet him later when we're more presentable. I, uh, I have to go. I should go, goodbye. Your heart is racing, you mutter something else and you go back inside and quickly slide the door shut behind you. For a moment, you only smile and giggle at the situation. I can't believe I'm living next door to the most celebrated bachelor in the whole city. You start to take off your now sweaty top, then freeze remembering. The door next to the balcony is a sliding glass door. He can see me right now. What a first impression. You've never been more embarrassed in your life. Maybe I could fix this. If I could go back out through the... Suddenly there's a tapping on the glass behind you. You turn around and see Justin giving you an amused smile while holding the champagne bottle you left with him. And now I have to talk to him under even more embarrassing circumstances. I wanted to meet him when I was presentable, but if I don't meet him now, it'll be way worse. Stealing yourself, an awkward smile plastered on your face, you go back out to the balcony. You laugh nervously as your skin again begins to warm. Justin has an easy smile on his face. You sense no judgment from him. This seems like quite a nice champagne to just be giving away to new neighbors. It is, I don't drink it. Well, not usually. I don't drink hardly ever. Not often. No, not often. Before you continue babbling, you take a deep, calming breath. He's just some hunk. Now what if he, he is handsome and rich? That doesn't mean he's God's gift to the world, so Adrian doesn't act. Well, the way you're acting. My friend brought it to celebrate my new place. Hey, new neighbor, welcome. The bottom doesn't seem to be empty, and you were just upset before? Did something go wrong with your apartment? Huh? Oh no, no, I'm just, well, I had to cut things short, work, deadlines. I suppose you shouldn't monopolize your work time then. Yeah, no. I mean, well, I guess if we're neighbors, you can monopolize with me anytime. Holy crap. What is wrong with my mouth? My time, I mean later, at my convenience, I. Well then, new neighbor, before you go, my name is Justin. Ignoring the fact that everybody in the city knows his name, you take your hand he offers. Even shaking his name seems to shoot raw electricity up your arm. Adrian, nice to meet you. With a charming smile, his gorgeous blue eyes drift across the balconies. With Adrian, you see around. Before you can utter another stupid word, you rush back inside and whip the curtains closed. And you stand there, reeling, your skin flustered. As you try to get over the fact that your neighbors with the most charming, eligible bachelor in all of New York, so much for a neighbor who's easy to deal with. A few days later, you get ready to head to the Blush headquarters where you work. 
You are so lucky to get this job blushes one of the premier fashion magazines in New York. As soon as you enter the front doors, you get a call from Jada. Can you come and see me in my office, darling? Sure, what's up? If I wanted to tell you on the phone, I wouldn't ask you to my office, would I? You hang up the phone without bothering to hide your eye roll from your coworkers. The moment you step into her office, she thrusts an envelope at you. Here's your invitation to the gypsies. It's tonight, you're covering it. The invitation reads, Gypsies, an enlightening experience. What is it? It's a new trance club or sink the wave bar or whatever. I'm sure it's just gonna be gone in a month, but you're gonna write up a review in any case, so try to not have too much fun. You glance through the glossy photos, which are virtually dripping with chic, sleek style. Do I look like somebody who likes going to bars? No, sweetheart, you look like somebody who would never be allowed to enter a trance bar, but you're going anyway. Should I argue with Jada about going, yes, I feel very out of place, no, it's my job. <laughs> I need to keep my job to keep my apartment, and besides, I can handle a night of standing in the corner taking notes. Okay, um, it does have a plus one on the invitation. Do I have to go alone? They sent me one, so I'm sending one. And don't freak this up. They ended up buying ad space with us. Okay, what kind of article is this going to be? Attendance, experience, peace. I want to say something about their bar. Drinks, crowd, music, and the dance floor. How am I supposed to dance if I'm going alone? I swear, for somebody not unintelligent, you constantly surprise me with your cluelessness. I'll have Jacob whip up something for you to wear. Now this is an experience piece. You have to dance, you have to talk with men or women. In short, you must pretend you belong there. So put some makeup on for once. And do your hair and ditch the glasses and get a decent pair of shoes. Be fashion. I don't want you to stick out like a sore thumb. We don't want you to look like you've been writing an article on the place. But I am. Look, just don't look like you. Angry but silent, you turn to go, but she calls after you. Don't forget to almost have some fun. Thank you, Jada. A few hours later, back at your apartment, the tabloids usually fall all over themselves covering every detail of Justin Adams' exotic travels. But lately, he's been spending more time at home partying. And you're just starting to get annoyed with him. This guy is really a party animal. It's so loud, I can't even focus on researching gypsies. Exasperated, you slam your notebook closed and decide what to do about it. I should go over there and tell him to keep the noise down, do nothing but we're gonna go over there. This is ridiculous, it's after 10 p.m. on a Thursday night. You leave your apartment and stop in your tracks. Just as door is open, the party is so crowded it has spilled into the hallway. A half a dozen, half drunken people look at you as you exit your apartment. Can you keep it down a little? Please, I'm like, I'm trying to get some work done. Hey, how about you just join us? Um, look, can you pass the message to Justin? Justin? Justin Adams. Oh yeah, he's on holiday, sorry. Great, now I feel like the uptake girl next door. How cool is it that he let us party here even when he's gone, woohoo! Well, that didn't work. Never mind, you decide it's time for me to meet Jill and Yuan for drinks. You wash up, change your clothes, and head out, shyly navigating the swell of people in the hallway. You find your friends at the cafe, they've already ordered you your usual. Hey guys, I swear, Jada's trying to work me to death. My personal life is hanging by a thread. Yeah, we can see that. She sure does do whatever she can to torture you. Let me know how I can help. Thank you, Jill. That's very nice of you. Ladies, I know she's a no notorious sadist, but she's also a beacon of intelligence and grace. What? I can't believe this. You're defending her, Yawn. You know, Blush is just a magazine. It's a ray of hope for the fashionistas of the world. You mean people living on Mars? Great, Yon. Finally, we can stop pretending like we have anything in common anymore. Jada's not a beacon. She's a demon. All right, all right. Truth. Speaking of the devil, why does she push you so hard? What did you do to deserve it? I really have no clue. Maybe Jada has high expectations of you. If you show her you can do well, it might mean it's time for a promotion. 
Enough about work, let's talk about my current favorite subject, Justin Adams. Your ears perk up as you feel a rush of just hearing his name. Oh, get out of here with your man crush. I saw Justin in the office this morning. What a snob that guy is. Oh yeah? I was trying to make eye contact as we were passing each other and it was like he didn't even see me at all. But Lord, oh Lord, that man is devastatingly handsome. Was it because he was wearing those sexy biker sunglasses? Can we pretend that was the reason? Yawn chuckles as Jill sticks her tongue out in mock disgust. A girl's got a dream. Boys too. Well, he's unattainable, so that's that. Not for us mere mortals. I heard he bought a new apartment a few months ago. I wonder where he lives. What should I tell them about seeing Justin? That you just saw Justin in your apartment? We'll do nothing at all. <laughs> They'll probably like a harp at us. They would practically move into my apartment just for the chance to see him every day. You think about Jill and Yon's noses pressed up to the glass of the windows and doors. You snort. Adrian, are you okay? Yeah, I, I just swallowed the wrong way. I wonder why he doesn't have a girlfriend. Well, he's constantly available. He dates all the time, just no longer than two weeks. A new girl every two weeks. Is that weird? It just seems weird. He's a playboy. For him, every woman comes with a two-week expiration date. I'm surprised anyone dates him at all. Who would want someone who takes a woman to bed and then forgets her? Uh, have you seen him? I don't think he'll stay single for long. Guys like Justin ends up married to someone their families approve of. What do you mean? While he's the heir to Adam's empire, he probably already has an arranged marriage set up to some matching heiress. Ugh, I can't imagine having an arranged marriage. Like yours hasn't been practically etched in stone by your mother. Troy is your mother's dream son-in-law. And changing the subject, anybody know about this club called Gypsy that's just opened? I like the previous subject. Never heard of it. What is the deal? You gotta work or write about it? Yeah, but it's really swank. Honestly, I feel intimidating at the prospect of trying to blend in. Joel looks down at your outfit, grimacing at your practical pants and flat sandals. Yeah, honey, your clothes are a fashionista's nightmare. And for God's sake, Adrian, those reading glasses, are you planning on going to a club to read? Those comments aren't meant to hurt, but they sure do sting a little. Guys, I'm comfortable with the way I look. It's not like I'm the pretty one in the family anyway. That's just what your mother tells you. Kimberly is the pretty one. Kimberly is the beauty. Well, she's wrong. But honey, come on, even supermodels have to wear makeup and do something with their... Yawn gestures to your frizzy, unkempt hair. Whatever is going on there. Hey, I'm in need of a makeover. Sorry, bestie, but yeah. Truth. Ouch. Well, Jacob is making me a dress to wear tonight, er... Jacob's dresses are... conservative, to say the least. I think his dresses are very comfortable. Exactly. Look, this is the perfect opportunity to show the world how sexy you can be. And hey, why not? It'll be fun. And who knows what will happen? Should I try to improve my look, get a makeover? Someday, but not today, it's more important to save your money. Someday, but not today. We would do a makeover, but we don't have any gems. <laughs> oh sure, I can't wait for a few weeks though. I'm so darn busy, guys. You're not going to blow us off, are you? Cross my heart, I would never. You said the last time we tried to give you a makeover. I don't remember that. She just blocked it out of her mind, just like I block out her wardrobe from my mind. You say goodbye to your friends, then swing by work to pick up the dress from Jacob. The dress is pretty, pretty conservative. You head home, you are just about to start getting ready when your phone rings. All right, you guys, so that is the end of chapter two. What do you guys think? I'm kind of wondering if that isn't Justin knocking on the door, but I really hope you guys did enjoy today's video. Definitely make sure that you do give this a very big thumbs up if you guys did enjoy. Let me know in the comments if this is something you guys would like to see once in a while here on my channel, and hopefully I'm gonna see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.